1969 Camaro that Tim and Angie Wheeler owned from Muskogee, Oklahoma. He brought it to us. Kind of really wanted a Copo Camaro, and we, after talking to him a little bit and kind of thinking of where we're at and what we do, I told him we would take the car on and we could just have some fun with it. He just let us kind of roll with it and, and uh, figure out what we wanted to do once we figured out what he was about. And so we went to the races, the dirt car races. Uh, he doesn't race any longer, but he's still involved in it and his family is. And that really inspired us to build the car we thought that kind of guy would drive. But we started with, you know, Detroit Speed Suspensions and, and LS Motors. You know, we know how that, can, that package can fit into what we want to do. And the things we did to the engine and all that was dirt car inspired. You know, we always thought of their family and what they, we knew that if we could put some of that stuff in there, they're gonna love it. The engine's a Don Harding. It's a, I'm gonna say it's a 418. LS3 stroked and bored. Uh, makes basically 600 horse. We just smooth the block, smooth the transmission, smooth the rear end. Uh, change the bolts out, make things fit. And Tim wanted it to have the feel of a 69 Camaro, so it's got a throttle body on it. Uh, Holly intake. Uh, has a feel of a carbureted car, even though it's fuel injected. Digital gauges to keep you kind of on top of everything. And uh, got every comfort you need. Air conditioning, tilt wheel, bare brakes. A lot of the styling cues on the car, we've tried to connect lines on the fenders, up the window, down the back of the, and when all of them were tightened up and, and, and peaked more like a newer car. The red stripe that's on the valve covers was the key element to make it tie into the car. And we wanted to accent the bumpers. There's a lot of work in those, making them fit tight. The back bumper is a, has the ends of a front bumper to com complete the panel lines around the back of the taillights. We use colors to kind of give the car an attitude. We, uh, but we still wanted some, some boldness and, and the color that Tim wanted was red is what we used on the pinstripe. So he still got his color in there, but this red is a candy and it's really vibrant outside. I think the gray and, and uh, the black and really toughens the car up. We put, we made the grill, uh, hand welded it all together and then had advanced plating, put nickel on it. All the bezels, the air intakes, most all the trim pieces were nickeled. But then we used a lot of black. On all, all the panels on the bottom were all made out of aluminum, and we uh, just felt like that was a continuous line around the bottom of the car to kind of your eye needs somewhere to go. So it just connected each piece to the next piece and kind of shows you which where the air was going, uh, the flow of the car. Uh, I really like the '69s because of the wheel openings and the uh, the motion in the side of the car. Also wanted to accent kind of the fasteners to kind of give it a race car feel. So we wired and tied the header bolts and did things that you don't have to do, but it really adds to the, the look and the appearance of it. seats are, it's a 69 Camaro seat, so the sizes are right, the height's right, everything's symmetrical to, you know, fit the Camaro in that era. But we took the headrest design of the newer model Camaros and put it in there, and it's bolstered more. But the dimensions are all correct for a 69, and this has the right feel of a late model. Black leather interior gets really, really dark. We wanted that diamond tug because we're trying to go for this late model performance thing like Ferraris and things have. So it's got that charcoal gray insert everywhere. My favorite part was actually the paint job on the hood, because I'm into lowriders. I really like the overlapping lowriders style. Every time we get the opportunity to kind of throw a little bit of that styling in somewhere. So with this car, we had all this carbon fiber parts, which are cool, but so we sat down and kind of drew up some ideas of how we can make that carbon fiber look like it is just overlaid. So we took the black, you know, because that's a highlight color we're using all over the place and kind of put it on the carbon fiber and then we even drop shadowed it so it really looks like it's really buried down in there and then it kind of goes to the red which we're using the red to kind of break the regular red so it's got a real bright red pinstripe and then the candy red which is darker 
you're going to carbon fiber and then you have shading on top of that so there's just layer 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 all right on the hood which is my favorite part we did the same thing on the rear spoiler and going around the, the ground effects and stuff so anywhere there's carbon fiber it's not just a carbon fiber part bolted on it's, it's buried in there and kind of integrated so it almost looks like a graphic Smooth everything, um, work put, changed out all the boats, put stainless bolts on everything, um, wire tied stuff, uh, built belly pans for it, not totally belly pans, but integrated the, the bottom of the car the same way, looked at it the same way we look at the top of the car, with the colors and the pinstripes and, and tried to tighten the stainless exhaust and tried to uh, just give it, uh, no matter what angle you looked at the car, you knew there was a lot of patience and time and effort and soul went into it.